All right, everyone, welcome to World War I. We're taking a look today at the causes of World War I. And that's going to be very important. A lot of times students want to jump into, okay, well, who are the two sides? Who won the war? And what were the consequences? Well, here's the thing. If you don't know what led up to a war, then you don't really understand the war. And that's not just for, any, for just wars. Any event, if you don't know what were the things that led up to the event and you just know the event itself, then you really won't understand the event. So we're going to take a look in this video, what were the causes that led up to World War I? Now, if you take a look at this map, let me get out of the way a little bit. This is the map of Europe. This is a map of Europe before World War I, right before World War I. Now, if you notice, this map looks very different from the maps of Europe that we covered in geography. And you have to understand what's going on in Europe. Right? Around this time, and it's not just the early 1900s, even though we're looking at the early 1900s, we could take a look going back into the 1800s. Europe is undergoing a transformation. And they're going from this idea of, hey, I'm, I'm just this tribe, or I'm just this this family group and so our piece of land this is what we're going to defend and we're fighting against all the other family groups and all the other tribes that are around our land and they've moved from that to hey wait a second so they moved from just I'm, it's me my tribe my family instead they've moved to wait a second I speak French and you speak French and you speak French and you speak French and we're all the same ethnic group we should have our own country. This land should be a nation devoted to us, to this particular ethnic group that speaks this particular language. And this idea of developing countries and nations has really taken over, has taken a hold of Europe. And by the way, I just oversimplified something that's actually very complicated. But for you guys, that's what you need to know to start off with. When you get into high school, You'll learn a lot more. It'll be a lot more complicated, but you just have to understand that foundation. The idea of the McGee tribe, that's all I'm focused on, from that to, oh, no, we're a country. Now, why is that important? Because now that you're a country, now that Germany isn't broken up into Prussia and you know, all sorts of other little sections of Germany, but they're kind of united as one, you now have this huge country called Germany. France, you now have France. You've got, again, Italy. Italy has become its own country just recently instead of kind of broken up into all these different warring family groups if you ever look at Italian history. So this is Europe. They're building countries. and They're basically turning into countries, from tribes into countries. Now, why is that important? Because now that you have a country, you need to have a military. You need to build up your military so that you can defend that huge piece of land that is your country. Not only that, but technology has developed and has been, and been developed for a while. But they are able, you're able to sail around the world, and they've been able to do that for a while. So it wasn't just like it happened in the 1900s, right? Think back, Christopher Columbus is 1492. So the point is, they are trading. They're bringing back gold, silver from all parts of the world, from all sort, all parts of the world, and they're bringing it back to the home country. They're colonizing different areas and bringing back the resources. Well, this is causing conflict because if you're France and you've got Germany over there, what if they want to colonize the same place? What if they want the same resources? So what's going to happen is, they, not only do you have countries that are now being built instead of tribes, but now they're competing for places to colonize outside of Europe. So what's going to happen is this. France, Britain, and Russia formed the Triple Entente in 1907. Now, when I say this is what happened, I mean alliances. So alliances started to develop. Because if I'm a country and I'm worried that, man, if there's a place I want to colonize, but I'm afraid of being attacked, well, what I'm going to do is form an alliance. So the country of McGee is afraid of being attacked as I go out to colonize whatever place. I mean, I'm afraid of being attacked by the country of Maya. So the country of Maya, Maya and I were rivals. So what I do is I go ahead and say, okay, you know what? 
I'm afraid of being attacked by Maya, so I'm going to form an alliance. I'm going to reach an agreement. I'm going to have a friendship, and I'm going to have a friendship with the country of Stephanie. All right, so country of Stephanie, I go to the country of Stephanie, I say, hey, I want to form an alliance. If the country of Maya attacks you, I'll come to your defense. And if Maya, if the country of Maya attacks me, you'll come to my defense. That's an alliance. And so this alliance, these different alliances develop to protect trade. They're not developing alliances to create a war, but they're developing alliances in order to protect themselves in trade. So that way, think about it. I, as a country, I'm less likely to, or I should say Maya, Maya as a country, is a lot less likely to attack me if she knows that attacking me means she also has to fight Stephanie as well. Okay? That is an alliance. And so these alliances begin to develop in Europe. And again, these alliances aren't about starting a war. These alliances are just about protecting, giving themselves protection and trade. So France, Britain, and Russia formed the Triple Entente in 1907. The Triple Entente became a way to check the growing power of Germany in global trade. Germany, once Germany unified, they were on the move in terms of trying to build their influence and build their empire, the German Empire. All right, the Triple Entente, France, Britain, and Russia, that was a way to kind of check the power of Germany and make it so Germany is a lot less likely to attack France. By the way, France and Germany have a ton of wars back and forth. But Germany is a lot less likely to attack France if that means that they have to fight Britain as well as Russia. So alliances are developing because of what is going on in Europe at this time. I right? hope that makes sense. We're going to keep on moving on. If We're going to keep moving on. If you have a question conference with me if there's something that's a little bit confusing for you because I know I am going fast but I also don't want this video to be 50 minutes long all right so again conference with me if you're not sure so we have these alliances developing now I want to focus on you guys see Austria Hungary the Empire of Austria Hungary right here so let us let's blow this country up not literally I mean blow up the picture so there you go Austria Hungary now why is this going to be important the empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire is huge and is really influential. And it covers areas of places that we now know as Poland, Czech Republic, oh, Czech Republic, I didn't mean to do that, Slovakia, all those, land, all those countries that we learned about, Hungary, Austria, Slovenia, all these are controlled, and there's more than just that, but all that whole area is under the Austro-Hungarian rule. Now, why do we need to know that? Well, let's go here. See here? Here's Serbia. By the way, I'm going to use the modern names for the countries because the countries in the Balkans, they change names so often. So I'm just going to use the modern names. So here's Serbia here. Serbia, there's a growing nationalist movement. If you remember Maine, nationalism, there's a growing nationalist movement. The people of Serbia want to rule themselves. They have no interest in being run by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. But the Austro-Hungarian um, Empire wants this land that's Serbia. The Austro-Hungarian Empire has already taken over Bosnia and Herzegovina. Remember that country that we learned about? They've already taken over this area. The people in Bosnia and Herzegovina are mad. People in Serbia, yeah, they're frightened of what's going on. All right? Now, why is this important? Well, because the nationalist movement, there's a specific group of young adults, 19 years old, 20, 21, all right, and more than just that. But I'm saying there's a group of young adults in Serbia that they feel, okay, you know what? The only way to keep ourselves safe from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the only way to ensure that we can be a country, we have to kill the Archduke of Austria, that's kind of like saying the king of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. His name was Archduke Franz Ferdinand. So their idea is, hey, if we kill him, then, hey, that will keep us safe. Dumbest idea ever. All right, the guy who ended up doing the assassination, we'll talk about that in a second, his name was Gavril Princip. All right, Gavril Princip, I can never get that pronunciation correct. All right, this guy 
wins the award for being dumbest person of the 20th century because his action of murdering the Archduke and his wife, or the Archduke's wife, not Gabriel's wife, the Archduke's wife, the Archduke and the Archduke's wife, is going to set in motion the events, or it's basically going to set in motion what will lead to World War One. It's going to set in motion the things that lead to World War One, and because of World War One, what happens at the end of World War One ends up leading to World War Two. So, dumb, dumb idea. First of all, murder, dumb idea to begin with, and wrong. But his actions are going to throw Europe into chaos, and two world wars will eventually develop because of what this guy does. So, Austria-Hungary, very important that we know that. Okay? Let's keep moving. So we have trouble in the Balkans. The Balkans is that region of Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Kosovo, Montenegro, that whole area, Albania. So let's take a look. At some of the trouble. So we, what I just said, Bosnia and Herzegovina, I'm putting this on the board in case you want to write this down. So hopefully you are writing some of the things that you see because remember, any test on European history will be based off of the notes. So hopefully you've been writing this down. If you haven't, go back and make sure you do that. So what I just said, Bosnia and Herzegovina wanted out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Serbia fears that Austria-Hungary might take them over too. What we just talked about. I'll leave that up there. Actually, you know what? You can pause. This is the beauty of video. Welcome to virtual, guys. All right. So here's our friend Gavrilo uh, Princip, or Gavrilo Princip. By the way, if you look down in the description box, I've linked a three-minute History Channel video that shows these, that talks about the assassination. It's really good to watch because you'll get an understanding of how the assassination took place and what the results were. So there's a three-minute video linked below. I really highly suggest you look at it. I showed it in class to my in-person students. Great video by the History Channel. By the way, hats off to the History Channel. I always want to give them credit where credit's due. So you, you'll want to watch that. So again, it'll be linked in the description box below. So Gavrilo Princip. Gavrilo Princip was a Serbian who was angry over Austria-Hungary controlling Bosnia and Herzegovina. Again, I'm putting this here so that you know this. We just, I already said it, but I want you, again, to be able to have this where you can pause and be able to write this down. All right? He decided to assassinate Archduke Franz Ferdinand. We just talked about that. So, the assassination. The Archduke and his wife were visiting the Bosnian capital of Sarajevo. So instead of them having to travel into the heart of the Austro-Hungarian uh, capital empire, I should say, the Austro-Hungarian empire, the Archduke and his wife, they go to Sarajevo, Sarajevo which is in Bosnia and Herzegovina. While there, on June 28th, 1914, Princip, because they're in a car with, a, with no roof, and again, I'll let the video explain more, but on June 28th, 1914, Princip shoots and kills the Archduke and the Archduke's wife. Now, as I said before, dumbest person of the 20th century. Because Austria-Hungary, who already wants Serbia anyway, they are mad. Needless to say, their, their king just got killed and their queen just got killed. So they are mad. They offer Serbia terms that they know Serbia is not going to accept. And so Austria-Hungary is going to declare war on Serbia. Now, here's the problem. You remember those alliances that we talked about that had nothing to do with war? They were just about trade and uh, basically giving each other trade protection. Well, those alliances that th these countries signed, thinking only it's going to come back to haunt them because it's going to drag them into World War I. So let's take a look here. On July 5th, 1914, Germany pledged to support Austria-Hungary. Now, Austria-Hungary wants to attack Serbia, but Serbia has an ally, and that ally is Russia. Okay, well, there's a problem because Austria-Hungary doesn't want to fight Serbia, which they can beat Serbia, but Serbia and Russia, that's going to be a little bit hard. Well, Germany is Austria-Hungary's ally. So uh, Germany says, hey, Austria-Hungary, we're pledging our support to you. So if someone attacks you, so if Russia declares war on you, we'll jump to your defense. All right, you guys are starting to see it's starting to be a little bit complicated now. This is really a fight between Austria-Hungary and Serbia. But Serbia has an ally with Russia. 
Austria-Hungary has an ally with Germany. Oh no, what's going to happen? One of the things I tell my in-person students, the best way to understand World War I is to think, think like this. Think of, uh, not think like this, but think of this, girl drama, all right? Now, this is not to pick on the girls, I'm not trying to pick on you, but girl drama in school, whether it's in fifth grade or if you're in person in middle school, think of girl drama where you got two girls that don't like each other, and so they're, they're kind of, they don't like each other, they're kind of going back and forth, you know, saying mean things, but what happens? Well, girl A has her friends, and so her friends join in on her side against girl B. Then girl B has her friends that join in on girl B's side, and before you know it, this thing is blown up, and you have this huge group of girls who are all at each other's throat, but most of them aren't really involved in the fight. In other words, they don't have an emotional connection. They're just there to help their friend. It's really only between two girls. But their friends that they're allied with have now joined in. And so now the allied friends hate the, the allied friends of girl B hate the allied friends of girl A. And there's just it's all this back and forth. Now, be honest. Some of you guys are nodding your head going, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. All right? As I said, this is not to pick on the girls, but it's the easiest way to understand World War I. Girl drama. There's really two people who are involved, but all their allies are coming in. And before you know it, now the allies are attacking each other and attacking the principal people involved. So that's the easiest way to understand this. All right, so are you ready? All right, Germany pledged to support Austria-Hungary. The Serbians, they're fearing war, so they asked help from their ally, Russia. So it's Russia, now instead of just Serbia against Austria-Hungary, it's now Russia and Serbia against Austria-Hungary and Germany. But wait, there's more. Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia, July 28th, 1914. Within one week, Europe descends into war. Russia joins Serbia's side we talked about, but look here. The Germans are going to help Austria-Hungary, but do you remember that Triple Entente from one of the first slides that I showed? What was that Triple Entente? Russia, United Kingdom, I was about to say really Britain at the time, we call it the United Kingdom, Britain, France. So guess what? Since Russia has joined Serbia's side and Austria-Hungary and... Uh, Austria-Hungary and Germany are declaring war on Russia. Guess who's allied with Russia? Britain and France. So now, the United Kingdom and France are going to join in to help their ally Russia. You see how it's expanding? Belgium is going to join in and help the United Kingdom, etc., etc. So now, all of a sudden, all these different alliances are forming. What, what was the main, who are the two people who are in conflict? Serbia and Austria-Hungary because each had alliances, and then those allies had other alliances. Everyone from Europe is being drawn into this war. The Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire doesn't exist today. What's left of it is the country of Turkey, but the Ottoman Empire was huge. They lasted from 1299 to 1922. They join in on Germany and Austria-Hungary's side. So you've got a world war in which you have the central powers, Central powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, those are the main ones. There's more that joined in on the central power side versus the allied powers. United Kingdom, as I said, is Britain, because you don't really have Northern Ireland at the time. Uh, Britain, France, Russia, Serbia, Belgium, Italy, and a whole lot of others. You see how it started with two, and now it's just blown up into a huge catastrophe? That's World War I. That's how everything got started. Now, because I don't want this video to go longer, there's going to be a second video, and I'm going to show, like a little, a little not a graph, I'm going to show you all the different sides, and we're just going to focus on the different sides and how they allied with each other. But I'm going to show a visual so that you can see it. So hopefully that will help you in case you're a little bit confused right now. Again, conference with me if you have any questions. Watch the other video so you can see how the different allies are shown. So I have little boxes. I'm going, to put the, I'm going to put the countries on each side so you know who's on what side and how it happens. Okay? Take care, guys.